Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Nursing Surgery Day 10. In today's episode, I, Haika from Group 26, will be explaining to you on how to take care of our patients in a vegetative state. Now, why is it called vegetative in the first place? Is it related to a vegetable? No, ladies and gentlemen, it is called vegetative state because it refers towards the preserved condition of our patient, especially a part of their vegetative nervous functioning. But let's dive deeper into what a vegetative state is, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, it is also known as a disorder of consciousness for our patients. It is usually caused by severe brain damage on our patients and they may look awake, but they are not aware of their surroundings at all. Now, let's talk about it specifically because there may be some of our patients, relatives or even family that might want to know which part of the brain is damaged. Well, specifically speaking, it is the cerebrum. It is the part of the brain that controls our thoughts and behavior that can no longer function in our patient who is in a vegetative state. However, the hypothalamus as well as the brainstem still function. That means the vital functions of our body can still function well, such as it allows our patient to be breathing, to regulate their blood pressure, their heart rate would all be still functioning. However, the only damaged part would be the cerebrum in many of the cases of vegetative state patients. By now, I can hear some of you asking me the question, but Haikal, how is it different from a coma since they're not using the word coma for a vegetative state patient? But let me tell you that a coma would make the patient to be uh, appearing as if they are asleep and they could not be awakened from that sleep. However, a vegetative state patient, they would appear to be awake. That is where some of their family members would be, he looks fine or she looks like she's awake. How come she can't respond? Well, that's the thing. That is a vegetative state patient. They look as if they are awake and fine. However, they cannot respond to any external stimuli of their choice. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, when we perform care towards our vegetative state patients, we must remember at all times that these patients are conscious. They look awake as well. It's just that they could not react to the stimuli due to the damage in their brain. However, they are still there in the body as if they are completely well. The only factor that makes them vegetative is that they cannot move but they are still conscious. Now that I've explained to you about what is vegetative state as well as gone deeply into what causes it as well as what affects it and what's the difference from the coma, we shall now learn on how to care for the patients. First and foremost, it is almost about all of the cares that we have learned from past classes, such as giving them daily hair care, checking the condition of their skin for any pressure ulcers, rashes or lesions, um, giving them eye care, ear care, giving them nail care because we do not want growth or bacteria to be under their nails because they, the body of those patients are still functioning. Um, we will also look at the tightness of muscles, any soreness if it appears, edema, uh, everything on the checklist as well as checking um, the signs and symptoms of their body for any malnourishment as well as checking the urine input and output, checking their weight and for so on. Now, a very interesting part about taking care of a vegetative patient is the oral care, ladies and gentlemen, because these patients cannot swallow nor spit. Thus, we still need to clean their mouths. However, we cannot use toothpaste or the normal toothbrush. This is because they cannot control, for example, when we ourselves are brushing our teeth, we just know the mess we make and how many times we have to spit to ensure that all the toothpaste gets out. But these patients cannot do that. Well, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there is a special tool that we use. However, I could not procure that tool for today's demonstration. However, I do have a replacement for it and as a supplementary and a bonus for all of us, this is what it looks like. It is called a toothette and it is already treated medically to help with 
mouth care. But before we begin with the demonstration, ladies and gentlemen, these are the materials that we will need to use. First and foremost would be a cup of water for us to soak the tooth egg in before we insert it into our patient's mouth. Next would be my examples of tooth eggs. Um, these are actually lollipops, but they are about the same size and shape and they function about the same, which is to be put in the mouth of our patients with consent. And this is a towel or a tissue that you could use to put underneath the cheek of our patient um, so that it could collect any drool or excess fluid that comes out of the mouth while we are doing the oral care with the tooth egg. Thanks to the nurse before me, the, our patient is already in a lateral position. We do this position to avoid any asphyxiation on our patient, especially when we are doing the procedure because we already put a toothache in our patient's mouth, we do not want more blockage of the airway. Next, I will be putting the towel underneath our patient's cheek to absorb any fluid during the procedure. Hello, Miss Lydia. My name is Haital and I am the nursing assistant for today. I was tasked to give you your oral care, which is to clean your teeth and gums, and I will begin with putting a towel underneath your right cheek, okay? Now, we will take the first toothache to be inserted and cleaned around our patient's lower teeth and lower gums. We make sure to use two toothaches so that we do not cross-contaminate the bottom jaw and the upper jaw. That is why we are using two. Miss Lydia, I will now open your mouth. I will now open your mouth. <laughs> so now I am cleaning the bottom jaw, your teeth and your gums. So now we will change the toothache by using the next one and cleaning the top teeth as well as the top gums of our patient. Once we are done, we close our patient's mouth. Okay, Miss Lydia, that will be all. I will now remove the towel from your cheek. Wipe off any excess fluid. Because our patient could not swallow or spit, we just give basic oral care where we clean around the mouth. And now we will return the patient back into a supine position so that we could avoid, avoid any bed ulcers. And that will be all for today's episode ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching this video.